Hi there Chevy owners, today in your 2022 Chevrolet Silverado 2500, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Kurtz base rails. And this is what our base rails look like when they're installed. You can see that they sit above the bed, but they really don't stick up very high, about an inch above the top part of your higher corrugation there. And they are fairly smooth, so um, I do prefer base rails that are like this where all the bolts are carriage bolts and they're down in the lower section. That way things are still smooth on top here. So if you were going to pick up like drywall and plywood and stuff like that, you could still slide it in here and slide it out without it causing any damage to it. Kurtz rails are fairly easy to install. It's one of the easiest ones out there to install. And between Kurt, I would say the only one that I might prefer over the Kurt is the B&W that, that we sell. Um, just because the B&W is so amazingly consistent and their machining is fantastic. Um, but these are really nice rails. They have a good powder coating on them and they're a similar design to the B&W. So um, I, I do like these ones a lot too. There's other manufacturers we have like Demco. I don't really prefer their rails because they'll use large bolts that go down through the top of the rail. And then you lose that ability to slide plywood in and out without potentially scoring up uh, the wood. You almost need like a scrap uh, sacrifice piece to go in first. With, uh, with these rails though, they do stay permanently in your truck like this. So um, you just keep that in mind when you're going to load things in and out that this is gonna be here forever. But again, they don't stick up very high and they're smooth, so they shouldn't really interfere too much with your operation. You can use any fifth wheel from Kurt with them, as well as many of the other manufacturers as they've got various holes for the various sizes, depending on the weight ratings that you're looking to pull. Now to make sure that your installation goes a little bit easier, I'd recommend pulling down your spare tire. That'll also ensure too that when you go to drill uh, through your holes, there's minimizing your chance you're actually gonna hit the tire or anything um, when drilling down through the bed. Your tools in your truck will slide in through this point back here. There's probably a lock in there and you'll use your ignition key to open it. If you refer to your owner's manual, you should have all the procedures and everything in there where your tools are located and how to utilize them. We'll begin our installation here in the back of our truck. We'll need to center the rail side to side. And then we're also gonna measure from the rear of our truck bed, not the tailgate, but the actual bed of the truck here, to the appropriate distance and make our mark. Now that is gonna vary depending if you've got a short or a long bed truck, so make sure you refer to your instructions for the appropriate distance based on your truck bed. So we've gone ahead and made our marks here. Now this does have a pretty thick spray-in bed liner in it too, and you might wanna add just a little bit of that length to it. Uh, maybe like a 16th of an inch or, or a 32nd of an inch just to compensate for the thickness of that uh, coating there. So, so it just helps offset for that. Once you've got it marked and laid out, we can go ahead and mark the holes that we're going to be drilling. I went ahead and marked them here on the rail so you can see we're going to be doing the center here towards the rear of the truck. And then if you go in our third square slot there on each side, we've also got those marked. So those are going to be the ones we're going to be drilling. So I'm going to go ahead and mark each one of these in the center of the square. I like to mark it just because it's a little bit easier to see when drilling the black powder or the black uh, spray and bed liner makes it just kind of hard to see. Especially when, because before we go to the full size that we're going to be drilling it out to, we're going to start with an eighth inch drill bit just to do some small pilot holes that we can also verify are going to properly line up with our rails. Because that way, if it's a small hole and something's, you didn't do quite, something quite right, you could easily fill that in with some silicone and never even really know that you made a mistake. So I went ahead and marked each of those. We've got our small drill bit now, and we're going to go ahead and just do a pilot hole down in each one of those. And there we go. Once we drill down through it, you don't want to make sure you don't drill too far, kind of keep control of it, because um, there potentially could be something that you could drill into below it. So just once you pass through, make sure you pull it up, stay in control of your bit. So we're now on the passenger side wheel well. We're gonna do this on the driver's side as well because um, the fender liner here does kind of hang down in front of our, uh, the side of our frame, which makes it difficult to hold our plates up there. So if you want, you could take the entire fender liner out or you could just take out a few screws here and fold it back out of your way. We're gonna use a T15 Torx to remove the fasteners here. We're going to take out all three that are right here and then we should be able to fold it back out of our way to be able to hold our side plates up there. Yeah, that should be plenty fine for us. You can, um, you can even maybe use like a 
bungee cord or something like that to hook into the loop to help hold it back. So here we have our side plate. This is the passenger side plate. The angles with the slotted holes in them are going to go above our frame rail. And you want the single hole here to be towards the front and the larger with the two holes towards the rear. So it's just going to kind of sit like this on the side of the frame. So we'll just slide this in place here. And sometimes you got to go the right direction to get it to be able to roll into position. And now we're going to look underneath and we're going to hold this up, making sure that it does line up with the holes that we just drilled out. But you might have a difficult time seeing if it lines up because of the heat shield here. So you can go ahead and remove this heat shield as well. We're going to use a 13 millimeter wrench. So we're going to remove the bolt here. There's another one back here. And there's a couple more towards the middle of the vehicle underneath. A uh, total of four, and we can get that heat shield out of there. It's gonna have to get out of the way anyway for us to put our hardware in, and it'll make it a whole lot easier to be able to verify that our holes are lining up. And we're just using a 13 millimeter wrench here. You might be able to fit a socket on a ratchet in there, because um, it is kind of a big gap, but um, I probably recommend a flex head to be able to get in there. Then once we remove this one here, we're gonna get the one towards the back that's on the side of the frame, and then there's gonna be two more um, towards, more towards the center of the vehicle. And now we're holding our side plate up. We pulled that heat shield out of the way. And you can, if you look straight up through our holes, you can see that the two pilot holes we made do line up with the slotted holes in our side plate. So everything lined up good. We're gonna go back now and enlarge all of our holes to a 9 16th size. Now you might not have a 9 16th drill bit. You could also use a step bit. This is something a lot, probably more common that you'll have and you can get your local uh, automotive store or hardware store. Um, and I actually like to use a step bit after I do this anyway, just to kind of deburr and clean up the holes. Once you've got them all drilled out, we're gonna clean up our holes here. We're just gonna use our vacuum. And then to help protect it from rust and corrosion, we're gonna go back with just some either clear coat or if you have black, you can use black spray paint as well. Um, something that'll, that'll match just to seal up to protect it from the bare metal being exposed to moisture. So we'll now take our bolts here. We're just gonna drop them down through our rail. And then we can head back down below to get our side plates up and start getting everything secure. So now we're gonna put in some hardware for our side plate. The front attachment hole for our side plate is gonna be this slotted hole that you see there, just buying those two smaller holes. It's gonna use the larger carriage bolt that comes in our kit. This is a larger diameter than the ones that we dropped down up top. You'll get a fish wire to be able to feed it in and you'll get a large spacer plate. Make sure that the spacer plate does slide over the square so you know you got the right one because the other spacers are gonna have a smaller square hole because uh, this again is a larger diameter bolt. So you'll slide your spacer over your coiled end of your fish wire, thread your bolt onto the fish wire And after your bolt's threaded on there, take the bolt and push it in first. Kind of got to line it up just right to get it to slide into the little slot there. It's a tight fit, but there you go. You see it will poke in there. Once you poke that in, just kind of push it in there some. Then you can take your spacer. You can drop it down in there. And then we'll pull our bolt back out. And then I like to put a angle at the end of the fish wire here just to keep it from being able to push back into the frame. So just giving it a bend there, kind of like a little hook. So that way we got that prepared for putting our side plate up into position. So now we're gonna grab our rail. Go ahead and take your fish wire and push it through the single hole here on the side of your side plate. We can then lift our rail up on top of the frame rail and use your coiled wire that we just had that we attached it to to pull the bolt back through the side of the frame rail. And then we'll undo our carriage bolt there, the coiled wire on it. And we're gonna take a nut and thread it onto the end to hold that in place. 
This is going to be a larger nut than the rest of your hardware. You'll get two larger ones. We'll take our nut and thread it on there. And you can just do it uh, kind of loose for now so that way we can maneuver it here in the back because the rear portion here is going to be held in place by a U-bolt. So here's the U-bolt that we're going to use for our rear attachment. You can see the lower hole there and the upper hole. This is going to slide around the frame from the inside towards the outside through the holes here in our rear side plate. Just kind of lift up on your side plate and slide your carriage or your U-bolt around the frame and line it up with those holes. That'll slide through there. And then we'll take the smaller nuts that come in our kit and thread it onto our U-bolt. And again, we're going to leave these just a little bit loose here to start so we can get the hardware started on the ones that we drop down through our bed and our base rails. Kind of get all the hardware started and then I like to tighten it down after I get it all, all started. Because that way if you need to move, maneuver stuff just to the you know, forward, backward, left or right a little bit, you can do that. So we're now underneath the vehicle, we're looking straight up. We need to start attaching the bolts that we dropped down through our base rail now. So I'm gonna start with the middle one here just real quick so you can see how this is gonna work. It's a little easier to see. We're gonna use very similar hardware for the side plate ones. So it's gonna start with, and I actually usually find it easier to just start these, but you need to put one of these split ones in place. This takes up space between the corrugation, because you can see this part's raised, and this part is lowered. So if we just put our plate up here and try to tighten it down, it can actually crush uh, this, these sections and bring them flat together. And we don't want that. We want to keep our corrugation in the shape that it's in. So this piece we can usually slide up right after we get it started. So we'll take the square hole plate here, slide that up. I usually put some side pressure on the bolt to keep from pushing it back up through the bed. Just a couple of threads on there to get it started. Then we can take our split one, line that up on top there, and then we can go ahead and snug this down. And we're just going to snug it down just hand tight again, so if we need to ever so slightly maneuver the rail left or right, we can do that. Now we'll head to our side plate. We've got two bolts that we had dropped down through there. So for our side plate, it's going to use again the same hardware as that middle one. You're going to put on the spacer with the square hole. Might have to push up slightly. Um, our, our bolts being a little funny, not, not quite lining up. Just get it pulled a little bit. That's why we want to leave things just a little bit loose. Get our nut started on there. Sometimes you have to hold up on the side plate just a little bit. Be able to slide that up there. And have enough threads poking through. And we'll get a nut started. Just a couple of threads is all you'll need to start because you need to put that split spacer up there. We can just kind of slide that in, sneak it in after we get it started there. I'm going to go ahead and sneak in the other one and then we can get the remaining hardware on there. Usually if you get the one started you can kind of tighten this one down some. And that way it'll kind of hold it up there for you making it easier to get that other one started. Because that way you got more threads poking down now. And similarly, I'll put a little bit of pressure on it, whether it's towards the front, the rear, the side, just kind of pulling on that spacer helps keep the bolt from wanting to push up into the frame. And then we'll just snug down this hardware hand tight. And again, make it just loosen up just so we can maneuver it. So now we're going to head over to the other side on the driver's side of the frame rail and put our side plate on the same way we did the passenger side. The only real differences between the two sides is you always want to check for things um, on your frame so you're not pinching any wiring or anything like that between your, 
U-bolt and your side plate. So on the other side, on the driver's side, we can see we do have some wiring right here. So we've got our trim panel tool here. Just kind of pop that stuff out of the side of the frame with it. That way you can take your U-bolt here and go between them and then give it a twist. And now we can get our side plate installed there and we won't damage our wiring. So I went ahead and got the other side installed and now we can go back and tighten it down. I did also hop back up top real quick and just made sure my rail was centered side to side and lined up um, front to back, lined up with all my marks and everything. And then we can come back down here and, and finalize snugging it down. We're gonna use a three quarter inch socket for all the hardware. I'm gonna start with the ones holding the base rail in place. That way the base rail doesn't move out of that center position that I put it in and then we can do the side plates attaching it to the frame. For the side plates that go straight down through the bed that hold the base rail, should be able to probably use a long socket, I mean a long extension with a socket to get up onto these ones up here. You may or may not need a swivel to get access to those. Looks like we're gonna need a swivel probably, at least for the passenger side here because of the exhaust. Bring our swivel in. We can get up there and get these snug down. And then on the driver's side, you probably want to take your swivel off of there and actually your socket too. So then you can slide your extension up between the wiring and then slip your socket back on to be able to snug these ones down. And we can go ahead and torque this hardware. Our rear rail is gonna be used um, as a template with our fifth wheel to line up the front one. So we don't want this one to be able to move. So we'll just finalize torquing these here. And we'll head to our, so our side plates here. The U-bolt's gonna use the same size socket. And now we'll go ahead and tighten down our larger front bolt. That one's gonna utilize a 15 16 socket. And we can torque that as well. So now for our front rail, we're gonna take our fifth wheel legs from the fifth wheel that you've got. Go ahead and slide it into the rear rail. Then you can lift up on the other side, slide your other rail in place, get it to drop down in there. I have to move and over around just a little bit to get it to line up. Be careful, watch your fingers when you're doing this. There we go, we got that in there. So I do like to take the pins and just slide the pins in place. That just helps ensure that when we get this all tightened down, that we've got to tighten down in a way that our pins are going to slide in and out easily. So we're just going to slide them through there. And then it's probably a good idea to just grab your tape measure and get it centered side to side because there will be just a little bit of play between the components. So just checking the measurement there, checking the measurement over here actually looks really good. So at this point we can make our marks just like we did on the rear rail. They're gonna go in the same location. The only real difference is the middle one here was towards the rear of the truck. On our front rail, we're gonna use the one that's towards the front of the truck. And we're gonna do the same as last time. Start with a pilot hole and then we'll step it up after we just verify that everything looks okay. Once you've made all your pilot holes, just double check that the two rear holes on each side, they do line up with the side plates. If that's all good, go ahead and move your base out of the way, slide your rail out of the way, and enlarge them to the 9 16th size. So after we got them all enlarged, just like the rear rail, we vacuumed up all the mess, hit them with some spray paint to cover up the exposed metal. Then we just put it, put our rail back, put our, uh, 
feet for our fifth wheel back in there and put the pins back in there. And then we can take our hardware now and drop it down through each point. And we'll grab our tape measure one more time just to make sure that it's as centered as best it can be here. Usually once you get the pins in and everything like this though, it usually makes sure that it kind of stays there for you, but we're just gonna double check it. And yeah, we're looking good there. So we'll head underneath now and start getting our hardware on. For the middle bolt and the other two side bolts that are towards the front of the vehicle, you're all gonna use the same hardware on these. They will not go through your uh, side rails you're going to use the spacer that has the hole in the center and that's to keep the corrugation from crushing and then just like the other ones you're going to use the space that has the square hole that'll slide over your bolt you can put some side pressure on it and then start your nut and this is going to be the same for all three of these front bolts now the rear side bolts those are going to go through our side plates and they're going to use the same hardware as our rear after you get your small spacer above the side rail between the bed and the rail to keep the corrugation from crushing, we'll take the spacer with the square plate, slide it in place, put a little bit of side pressure on it, and then start our nut on there. And then we're going to do the same thing for the rear bolt on the other side. After you've got them all started, we can go back and tighten them down and we're going to torque them just like we did the rear ones. I will say for some of these, it's gonna be a little difficult getting your torque wrench in there, so you would likely wanna invest into a three quarter inch crow's foot to be able to get to some of the ones like over here where our fuel tank is. Our crow's foot is similar to a socket, but it will be almost like a combination between a socket and an open wrench head. It'll have a place to clip onto your socket and be a little open wrench. And what we're going to use here is similar to a crow's foot, but rather than having an open end, it has a box end. So if you can find those, those work really well for these tight spaces. Because sometimes crow's feet, especially from a cheaper manufacturer, will want to spread open. This will give you a much better contact on the bolt. Once you get all your hardware torqued, that'll complete the installation for the rails. At this point, we can put our heat shield back up as well as our spare tire. You will need to do some minor trimming to clear the U-bolt. Um, so just give that, use some shears or tin snips just to cut that out. Do be careful after you use tin snips or shears, it can make those edges kind of sharp. So just pay attention to that. And then that'll fit right back up in there. We can just put the hardware right back in. Once you've got your heat shield back on, you can come over to your fender liners and also reinstall those. I'd recommend doing the heat shield first. A little bit of access from the side will make reinstalling the heat shield easier. You'll just need to take whatever fifth wheel that you want to use, drop it in place, and you should be good to go. If you were using uh, pieces from your kit to help you get set up like this, you can go ahead and finish reassembling this piece um, with the rest of the head unit and the rest of the parts that get it installed. I do like to usually just verify if I pull the pins out that it does pull in, in and out of there smoothly. Nice and smooth. So yeah, at that point, you just can't ask for anything better. If you go to pull this up and it's kind of tight, um, you might need to loosen the hardware and shift them a little bit, but usually if you put your pins in like we were doing, you're good to go. And that completes our installation of Kurt's base rails on our 2022 Chevrolet Silverado 2500.